Today, we're going to talk about fruit flies. The wonderful thing about fruit flies is they come in two sizes. The smaller one, Drosophila melanogaster, and I'm sorry, but uh, one thing you're going to find out is the more you dive into chameleons, the more Latin seeps into your vocabulary. Anyway, the smaller one is Drosophila melanogaster, and the larger one is Drosophila hydei. You can just refer to them as melanogaster or hydei, or when you call up the place and order them, you can just say the smaller one or the bigger one. That works too. The larger chameleon species, like the panther, the veiled, or the jacksons, can take the hydei. The smaller species, like carpet chameleons, jeweled chameleons, or Elias chameleons, they would do better with the melanogaster. Now, when in doubt, always get the melanogaster, the smaller one, because you can't go wrong doing it smaller, and the panther veiled and Jackson's chameleons will take the smaller one as well. Now, we are lucky because we're benefiting from the scientific community that has provided us with flightless fruit flies, so we don't have to worry about having a cloud of fruit flies around our little feeding cups. But that also means we have to be very careful to seal our containers so our flightless fruit flies don't get out and the flighted fruit flies don't get in. When preparing for my baby chameleons to hatch, I like to start out a month before I expect those eggs to hatch or the female to give birth. And that's when I start my fruit fly cup production. And depending upon how many babies I expect, I'll produce anywhere from two to four to six to eight fruit fly cups every weekend. And if I start a month before I expect the babies to come, by time the babies come, I will be in full production. And I don't mind overproducing because those babies need as much food as possible to grow as fast as possible. And I would ha rather have more food than not enough food. Of course, to help me with that, I got myself a cute little dart frog and that way I'm always producing fruit flies because I'm always feeding a dart frog. So it's a good idea for you to get a dart frog or 10 because they are so cool. Now it's easy to get into fruit fly production because companies make a very convenient pre-made mix that you just add boiling water to, mix it up, and you are ready to go. They even have complete kits, which will include those deli cups with a sealed but breathable lid and excelsior which is kind of like that that wood spaghetti stuff that they use for packing it goes into the cup and then the fruit flies have something to hang out on and that is as simple as it is keep your fruit flies in an area that's around the mid 70s fahrenheit and around 65 percent humidity and you're good to go now it does take two to three weeks for the cups to start producing so this is why you need to start this process before the babies hatch. Now I do acknowledge that the hatch date is an estimate. And so yes, you may end up being a fruit fly farmer and having racks of these fruit flies constantly cycling. But I gotta tell you, once those babies come, you will want to have all of that food on hand. Feed those little guys and grow them up strong. In the next episode, I'm gonna be talking about another easily reproduced feeder item bean beetles. This is episode two in an ongoing series about feeding hatchling chameleons. Follow Chameleon Academy to see the whole series, and I will see you tomorrow.